So in the previous video, we were talking about while loops and how to use them. Now we're going to look at something that's quite similar, and that is a for loop. And a for loop has a set amount of loops, which means that if you tell it to loop five times, it will loop five times, and it will not check whether a condition is true or false for the loop to continue. So it's much better for having a fixed amount of loops. But let's get started immediately by starting with a very simple for loop example. So we're just going to go in our main, and right here we will write for i in one, two, five, we will print line i. And this is the most basic for loop you can create, which means we have this value, which gets incremented each time this loop successfully goes through. And it will do that for the numbers one to five with five inclusive, and it will print it each time it loops. So what you should get as a result is a program that says one, two, three, four, five in a line going down. And as you can see there, one, two, three, four, five, and there's something that is very similar to that, and that is, we're gonna write i in one until five. And the difference between the double dot and the until keyword is that until will go up to five, which means it will not use five, but it will do one, two, three, four, and once it reaches five, it will stop. If we click play, you'll see it will only go up to four. So one, two, three, four. And that is the difference between using the double dots and the until keyword. So for most cases, I think it makes more sense to use this double dot because it's a lot faster to type in and it's a lot easier to keep track of when you can see all the values that are gonna get printed. But uh, right under that, we're gonna create a line. So we're gonna write print line and we're gonna do the escape character with the new line character. And we're gonna write three slash, uh, three hyphens and we need to put this inside quotation marks. And that's just to create a small break between this one and the next example I'm gonna show you. And this is gonna be how to use the for loop backwards, which means if we do for i in five down to one, we are going to print line i, and this is gonna give the exact same result, except it's gonna go backwards, which means it's gonna count five to one. You'll get five, four, three, two, one as a result. And if we click on play, you'll see we have the first one and then we got the line break. And then down here it says five, four, three, two, one. Uh, let's move on from there. And to make this actually a bit easier to read, we're just going to remove the line. So it's gonna be just a straightforward count from one, two, three, four, five to the right. And just to show you real quick what I meant by that, because it was quite hard to say, it's gonna look like that. Now let's copy this print line statement and paste it right under, and we can do our next for loop. And this is gonna be how to step or to increment it by two or four or any number and skip every few numbers. And what do I mean by that? Let me show you right here. So for i in zero to 100, step 10. And what does that mean? Let's just print i as always, so we'll paste it in there. Actually, this is a very bad example. Let me fix that real quick. So we're gonna actually interpolate it and give it a space. And then we're gonna click play. And as you can see, it prints 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, all the way to 100 with the step of 10. And you can also do that backwards. So we're going to command and copy that. We're also going to copy this print line divider. And we're going to write 100 down to 0. So it's going to do the exact opposite of the previous one. And as you can see, it is very straightforward how you can use a for loop. Now I want to show you that this also works if you have strings. So for example, if we do val languages, and we are going to equal that to a list of string. And I'm just gonna copy and paste a few strings to make things fast and simple. And then right under, we can do for i in languages, we will print each one. So it's print i, and that should be a print line to make things easier. So it will be print line i. And that means it will loop through each one of these at the index of each number. So this is the index of zero, index of one, index two, and it will go all the way to the index of four, and it will print each one of these languages until all of them are printed. And if we click on play, it should print out all of these languages. And that is a very easy line of code to write to get this result. Otherwise, there's one more I can show you, which is val text equals whatever text you enter. And right under we can write for i in text, we're going to print and interpolate to make this look a bit nicer. We're gonna print i, uh, we are going to add a 
small full stop symbol here. So what you should get is a very fancy alteration of this, as you can see over here, whatever text you want. And we can also expand that a bit. Whatever text you want to enter, and you can make it look very fancy. So what it does here actually is print each letter in the string one, by, one at a time. And if we put three dots, you'll see this becomes very, very long. And it's really cool that you can do this kind of thing with for loops. And I believe that's all you really need to know about for loops for now. In the near future, we might do something a bit more advanced. And uh, again, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.